Okay, with this video, what we're going to talk about is um, integration services and its most basic level. Um, and what we're going to achieve by the end of this video is grabbing information from a database and putting it into Excel. Um, so let's get started. What we need to do first is create an integration services project. So we'll go into here, integration services, and I'll just give it a meaningful name. And we'll click on OK. So here we are, we've got our um, basic integration services window open. Yours may be slightly different if you're playing along with me. Um, but the first thing is we need to just understand some of the core concepts of the screen layout, because if we learn them now, it'll put you in good stead for the future. The first thing really we need to talk about are these tabs. These tabs are pretty much central to any integration service package. So what's control flow, what's data flow? They're the two major ones that you'll be clicking on all the while if you're using integration services. Um, control flow. Control flow is basically, as it says, the control of the package. A better way of saying it would be it's the logic. So for example, um, step one, I want it to delete an Excel file. Step two, I want to um, put information into a new Excel file. Step three, if it is passed, I want to send an email of success. And step four, if it is failed, I want it to send an email of failure. So that's sort of the logic of the information. What data flow is, is the step that I talked about, which was step two, which is I want to bring in um, Excel. I want to take information from a database and put it into an Excel format. So let's do that as an example. So I'm going to go back to control flow. And actually, before we go on, just notice on the left hand side, we've got these control flow items. Now watch what happens when I click onto data flow. You'll notice that all the options change. That's purely and simply because data flow deals with the data aspects of the integration service package, whereas control flow deals more with the logic of what you want to do. For example, send mail task is here, but it won't be in the data flow screen. OK, so what we're going to do is choose a data flow task. Now, I am a stickler for naming conventions on the control flow. The reason being is if you set switch on error logs, which we'll talk about in a separate video, error logs can be an absolute minefield if you're not careful. So if you name them here, it makes your life a lot easier when you're coming to try and um, hunt down problems. So I'm going to call this DF, short for data flow, and I'm going to call this um, employees. And there we go, that's the rename. Just to mention how I renamed that is you can either, um, well really you click once and then click again on the text. You don't double click because if you double click, what happens is it jumps you into the data flow tab of that task. So you click once, click again to go into edit it. Anyhow, with that done, I'm going to go into the data flow tab or double clicking would take us into the data flow of employees. So what we need to do is before we can start dragging and dropping things on here, we need to actually create some connection managers. Now, connection managers are the shared data sources which are used throughout the entire package. So it doesn't matter whether I'm in data flow tab or the control flow tab, the connection managers will always remain. So what we're going to do is, as it asks, right click and do a new um, connection. Now, if you're database savvy, you'll see there's all sorts of different kinds of connection available to us. I'm going to choose um, an ADO.net, and I already have one set up, but I'm going to I'm going to do it from scratch here. Now, I apologise. Next screen goes over the recording area, so what I'll try and do is try and keep this as tight as possible. Oh, it's fitting on nicely this time. Trust me, it's going to change in a minute. Server name, I'm just going to put in a full stop, which just means my local server. If your server is located on a different box, you can either click on the drop down arrow or type in the server name. Um, because it's local, I can just use my Windows authentication because I'm the administrator of the box. And in the drop down box, I'm going to choose this database here, which is AventureWorks Q1, and click on to OK. And there we go, it's just listed there. And I'll click on OK again. And as you can see in the background now in the connection manager, it's now created a new connection manager. Now what I will do is I'm going to rename this and call it ADO and then um, AdventureWorks. Do it properly. 
Okay, so there's that. Um, and now what we can do is in the data flow tab is we can now start bringing information in. So for example, I want to read the data. So I'm going to bring in the data reader source option and double click on that. And in the connection manager, notice that the dialog box goes off screen. Only what you see at the bottom underneath there is OK, cancel and help. Um, so I'm just going to be clicking on OK in a minute. So I'm going to choose the ADO adventure works that I've selected. So now we've now told the data reader what data source we're looking for. What we do need to do, though, is actually put in the SQL. Um, now, I went into um, SQL um, before recording this, and if I just do a new query, I'll show you what I created. I created this particular script, which just gets me the title, the first name, last name, email address, and phone. If I just run that, you'll see there's my results. So what we're going to do is back in integration services, is in this box here and tell you a little bug or undocumented feature don't paste here do not paste here otherwise all it does is it pastes the first line of the text now what we'll find is because this goes over multiple lines what it will only do is it will just show the select part so what you've got to do and I learned this the hard way is click on the three dots and then once you're in the string value, then you can paste or type whatever you want in. So there's our structure. And OK. Now, you're going to know whether it works pretty much straight away, because when you go into the column mappings, it has to interrogate the um, table. And sure enough, it, it's been fine there. If it couldn't see the table, at that point, what would happen is it would come up with an error. Now, the command timeout is the only other option to um, just discuss at this level. Um, that basically controls um, how long before it switches off when it's um, doing it. Now, if it's getting a constant reply back from the server, your timeout's always going to be um, at 30 and it'll not be a problem. However, if it takes a long time to formulate the um, SQL command before displaying it, you may want to up that value from um, 30 seconds to 60 seconds and so on. Um, and as it says here, if you put it on zero, that's infinite. Some of the um, SQL that I do in, in my day job is quite heavy duty on the processor, so I have my command timeout on zero. It's not always a good idea. However, with that done, we've got our select statement. I'm going to click on OK and I'll just make this a little bit wider. Now what we're going to do now is go to our Excel destination and drag and drop that on. And what we've got to do is on the arrows here, we've got to drag a connection to the Excel destination so it knows what data it's got to bring across. And then finally, we just go into here and what is the connection manager? Now it's OLEDB. Um, there is no OLEDB connection manager because it needs to convert it to Excel. So what we've got to do is create a new one. And I will just call this, so if I go browse, I'm going to just leave it in my document section. I'm going to call it um, employees. But you've got to make sure you put in the extension .xls. And then at that point, what version? That's fine. I'm going to click on OK on that. And then the final step, which is very bizarre, is that you are going to need to put a sheet in. But this is where it gets weird. Um, you don't see sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, because this particular Excel file doesn't exist yet. What you do is you click on new. And if you're a little bit SQL savvy, you'll notice that this looks very, very much like you're creating a table, as the heading says. However, what you're really doing is you're converting this terminology into creating a spreadsheet. So I'm going to call this employees, but I'm going to just put in test at the end so you'll see it when we look at the results. So I'll just click on OK. And at that point, just check the mapping so we know that's our data source going to, with the little arrows, our destination. That's great. We'll just click on OK again. And we're ready to go. But bear in mind, in the data flow section, there are two particular options. Whereas if we can go to control flow, there's only one. So all we do then is um, we can run this by clicking on the um, play symbol at the top. So I'll just click on that and off it will go and you can see it's gone a green color now if I just jump into the data flow task you'll see how many rows it's actually selected and put into its destination so I'll click on this link here to um, complete it and now what I need to do is just start up Excel and we should see the results
so any second now and there we go just opened it up there we are so we've now got our titles at the top notice the tab says employee test and there we have it we've got our entire excel list now the great thing with this particular facility is you could actually use it um, as SQL as well so um, you can manipulate the Excel spreadsheet um, via SQL if you wanted to using integration services but for now this really concludes this video um, but we'll be talking in much more depth about how integration services works thanks